we are in our beautiful PA-24 Comanche 250 uh, by A2A and the aircraft is up and running we're just sitting here on the ground and what I want to do what I want to do guys I want to explain to you and have a chat about this autopilot unit here right and uh, how it features how it works uh, and all the uh, all the stuff right so there's a couple of things the A2A manual for the Comanche on page 26 uh, it starts talking about the autopilot. It gives you an overview and, it, you know, it gives you a very f decent overview and explanation of how things work. Most importantly, the autopilot or A2A's autopilot is fully custom coded and it doesn't rely on the default Microsoft Flight Sim autopilot. However, for your convenience, they've connected most of the stock Microsoft Flight Sim events to their code. So it means you can seamlessly control the autopilot buttons with the same shortcuts used in other aircraft. Now, do take note that some of the shortcuts will have slightly different functions simply because of the design of this autopilot. All right. So it's not your conventional autopilot. That's what we're talking about. Um, this aircraft, it doesn't have a pitch vertical speed mode. Right, uh, it doesn't do pitch information, so we need to be aware of that. Okay, now if you want to get more information, and this is where A2A absolutely shine because this is the level of detail they go into. They have a link here for the S Tech System 30, and it's the actual pilot operating handbook for the actual unit. Look, the actual unit that's how coded or how well coded A2A have done this autopilot unit into their air, uh, aircraft. And the reason for that, well, this is the autopilot unit that is in Scott's Comanche. It's the very same one. So it explains how it works, how to make the things work, how it's connected, and all the jazz. So that's the real manual. You can go ahead and check that out if you want to dive in a little bit deeper. What I'm going to do here today is have an owl shout about it, and uh, well, we'll have a look about it, right? So what I need to do... Uh, well, I need to get airborne. And again, we have all these options uh, to change what type of navigation system we want in our aircraft. For example, I'm sporting the GTN 750. We can go with a simple GNS 530 if you're more comfortable with that. Or even, you know, no GPS unit if you want to do VOR navigation. You can do all of that with this autopilot unit. All right. So I'm going to keep it on the GTN because I want to get some information from it. Right. So uh, we'll let this unit power up which it is. Uh, quick checking my aircraft and systems and the devil knows what. We should be good. We should be good. So I'm just going to taxi out a burr here, right? So parking brake coming off. I did a small bit of power. And the showcase... Oh, look, I'm getting a notification. There's a new update. The showcase here isn't going to be my flying because <laughs> I've already proved how dodged that is. I want to get airborne. I want to get airborne. I want to be able to show you how to use this autopilot unit. Is that fair enough? So. Lots of flaps. Short field operation in a Comanche, it is possible once you have everything set up correctly, right? So, get ourselves lined up. Okay, so what I need to make sure is flaps are set uh, to the first stage, mixture goes to rich, and everything else we'll worry about later. Put on me out squawk, lights are on, power coming in, and we're going to blast on off. So, let the power come up. Holding the toe brakes, and remember, it's the same crack again as I was showing you guys yesterday. When you're on a soft field, on grass, well, you want to keep a small bit of back pressure on your yoke or joystick, because you don't want that prop getting down and getting damaged, right? So that's all I'm showing you there. So, brakes off, and we're rolling. So we're looking here for around 80 knots, give or take. Murph, you'll have to use all the horsepower. I see what you did. Brilliant. So there's 80. Yep, see Daisy. Okay. Positive rate of climb, and we're indicating it. Go ahead and bring up the gear. Bring up the gear, Murphy. Uh, bring up the gear. There we go. I still have a set of the three-way switch, so sometimes, you know... Okay, so what I want to do here, I want to get the aircraft straight and level. All right? And we're on a heading of 180 degrees. So, as I have reduced the flaps, we're still climbing here. And I'm just going to add in a small bit of trim to get the aircraft somewhat set up. And then we're going to have a look at the different mode switches on this autopilot. All right? 
the first thing you need to do is turn on the autopilot and you can do so by clicking on the autopilot master switch which is located just above your mag switch beside the avionics unit okay once you turn on the autopilot it's going to go through its own self-test i forgot i oh, never paused the uh, the command G. it doesn't like pause but uh it's not ready until the green light over or dy or ready is illuminated see this light here so we don't do anything until this is on, right? So, autopilot on. So you can see now all the modes that it has. And we'll talk about these modes here now in a moment. So we're just going to wait for the green light. Now we know that our autopilot unit, well, it's ready, okay? Now some of the switches and buttons that we have outside of the main panel itself, well, you'll notice if you look at the yoke, you have an autopilot disconnect button, then you have altitude engage or disengage. And then of course you have your autopilot master switch. If you disappear the yoke, well A2A have put the buttons down here so you can still use the autopilot function. So let's talk about the mode switches, shall we? We have ST. ST means stable or stabilize. Basically, that's going to stop the aircraft rolling left and right. It's going to keep the wings level, right? And if we want to engage uh, or disengage, we just press on this little middle button right here. So we put it on to ST. Okay. If we go altitude mode, so if we say, hey, stick it on altitude because I want to stop climbing, this is what you do. Don't just hit altitude engage. What you need to do is trim the aircraft out correctly, right? We want to trim it. It's not like your normal conventional autopilot, right? So I'm just going to get me trimmed there or thereabouts. And once you have successfully trimmed out your aircraft, bring back the RPM so we're not cooking the engine. Here we go. And I'm just going to trim out my controls here a little bit. All right. About there. So we're going to hit this Alt Engage. Now, see the way the little blue light turned on? That's letting us know that it's now going to hold this altitude. Perfect. What might happen, you might get a trim up beep beep or a trim down beep beep alert and for some people that'll wreck your head remember to get your aircraft trimmed before you engage the altitude hold otherwise if it beeps i'll show you i'm gonna it's telling me to trim down so watch this i'll now trim down if i trim up you'll see the alert hitting it i'm now physically moving my trim wheel because I have it bound to a control, but I have it located up here, look. So I'm trimming up. And see the way that's beeping the all the time, look. All the time is beeping. So it's telling me I need to trim down. Well, let's trim down. And this will capture it somewhere within plus or minus two up or two down. That's It's a good job of doing it. So it's still telling me I need to trim down because you can hear the alert. So if we put on the headphones, you hear the beeping, right? So if you want to get rid of that beeping, all you need to do, well, do what you're told. Trim down. And keep trimming down. Nice subtle movement, or movements, until it stops making noise at you. Right? See that? Now, it might ask me to trim up a little bit. But if you trim out the aircraft correctly, you shouldn't hear that beeping. If I've trimmed down too much, it'll say, hey, you got to trim up. I'm working against the forces. That's what it's telling you to do. Does that make sense so far? So if you're struggling with the up or down warning lights and they're deafening you and they're getting annoying, all that's wrong is your trim is not correct. That's all. Okay. The next stage I want to show you, as we're in ST or stable mode, well, if you notice on this push button here, it has an L and an R, right? This is to do with your bank hold or roll right so if i want to turn the aircraft to the left right a pitch angle or a roll angle i just turn this to the left right and have a look here what happens so i've asked i've told the airplane i want you to turn to this angle and hold it that's what you do so you can see the aircraft turning i can get more aggressive if i wish so she's going to turn a little bit more pretty sweet really handy if you want to enter 360s or a hold for example right 
And as the aircraft turns, well, we all know what happens during the stages of flight. As you turn the aircraft without any sort of rudder, well, the nose will want to dip or it'll want to rise a little bit. So that's why we're hearing the trim up or trim down. Yeah? And it's going to hold this angle forevermore until I reset it. So if I reset it, I bring it back to the center. And it's not going to be an instant response of this autopilot. And they've actually coded in some of the quirks that this thing has. And we'll see that now when we try to go hunting using the track modes of low or high. We'll get to that in a moment. So it's telling me to trim down a little bit. Okay. And then that's the alert's gone. If we want to turn to the right, same crack again. Let's give it a, a, a much more aggressive roll to the right. And you'll see the aircraft now banking right. Now this is handy if you want, uh, you know, if you want to just go into a hold. We can also go heading mode and use our heading indicator and your heading bug, right? Now just remember, you need to make sure that you have the gyro synchronized. You got to reset the gyro because it drifts, right? So what we're going to do here, I'm going to tell the aircraft to straighten up by moving this guy back to the center, right? You see it there now on our artificial horizon, wings are now level. And using the HSI, I'm going to put my heading bug to 210 degrees. I want the aircraft to turn to 210 degrees. I now need to engage heading or HD mode. To do so, I just press on this button here that says push for mode. Now, the advanced part of this, if you don't have access to that button, it's in your way. If you open up your start menu, located behind me mallet head, um, there's an A2A simulations folder. And you can open up the input configurator and this is where you can actually bind some controls to your autopilot say for example you're using a bravo or you're using you know hotas or whatever and you, you, you don't want to be pressing the buttons on the aircraft i'm almost certain a stream deck will work here as well but you don't want to use the buttons on your aircraft well this is where you bind the buttons do it through here and all the modes are there right anyway let's go to heading mode push the mode button see the way the indicator light has now changed to hd and the aircraft is now going to start pointing in the direction of our heading bug. I want to go to 210 degrees and the aircraft is going to go to there. That's fairly straightforward. Fairly straightforward. Okay. Next up, we have the nav options for which we can track low or track high. The difference between tracking low and tracking high, it really comes down to um, fidelity, how accurate it's going to be. So, for example, and this is, you can read about it, but say, for example, if you're going by radio navigation and, you know, the radio uh, signal, uh, it, you know, it's degraded because of distance and it's not as sharply accurate, but you just know it's over that region somewhere. Well, that's ideal for tracking low. If you're going to go by something like GPS or, you know, instrument approach and all that jazz, that's high precision. Set it to high. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put in a something. If I can go to nearest on me, uh, beautiful GTN, and if I look for the closest VOR, let's see if this loads up correctly. We should pick up the Clonmel VOR. However, there's one here, Wolf Trap. Shannon is 40 miles away. So uh, the Wolf Trap VOR frequency is 116.3, right? And it's a bearing of 018. Okay. So, 116.3, 116.3, go ahead and transfer that. I want VOR navigation. If I'm using any of the GTNs or the GNSs, your VLOC or your course deviation indicator, CDI, changes nav mode. If I'm not using any of the fancy avionics and you're just using the stock, no GPS, right? Have a look at this. What I need to do is tell it what nav mode I'm following. Right? So we're going to say, right, frequency is 116.3. That's engaged. I want to listen to the nav. And I want to set up uh, my instruments over here. Right? Right, so on nav mode, we know it's uh, in a direction of 180. Right? And we see with the bar and all this is aligned. You'll see all this coming in together. And what I want to do, I want to track. Now, where nav mode comes into it, and where if you want to follow a GPS route, you need to get the aircraft pointed in the right Hello direction. There. It'll only allow you to deviate 
plus or minus five degrees. So if you have a GPS and you're looking at a magenta line, you need to get the aircraft within five degrees of that. As in, it can't, you can't be facing the opposite direction. You need to be almost pointed directly towards it. And then range and all of this stuff will come in as well. All right? So we, let's see if we're getting any distance. So we're 25.1 nautical miles, 25.2. We're actually moving away from this VOR. That's not handy, is it? Okay. So how do we bring it all up? Again, it's by using normal VOR to VOR navigation because you're tuning in and you can have a listen on your radio to make sure you actually have the right station. Yeah, the actually, uh, you actually have the right station. And if we go back to our digital avionics, let's have a look at the GTN. Give it a second to load up. It'll need to initialize. And I'm gonna actually put in that VOR uh, as a destination. And I'll show you here now how it works, right? So if you go once again to, uh, there's an update needed, go to nearest, go to VOR, give it a second, Wolf Trap, click on this, right? And I'm going to go direct to this Wolf Trap VOR, WTP, activate. I can now see it's behind me, look. Okay. I'm on VLOC, or I can go GPS mode. Now see the way my HSI has changed. We now have an arrow telling us we need to turn the aircraft. Okay, well, we're going to turn, right? We're going the opposite direction. So I'm still in heading mode, but I want to show you this. Just so you, you know how it all works, right? And remember, it's it's with this airplane, um, it, 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 you know, it pays dividends to actually read up in the manuals because you can actually learn a lot of the features, if you like, uh, of what's available, yeah? So we're still tuned into 116 decimal three. So we're gonna have a listen now on our radio to see will we start picking up that VOR. war. Right? And see how far off this line we are. So we need to continue our turn here. So we want to turn into it. Yeah? We want to turn into it. Give it a second. what I want to do, I want to put it into track mode. So we're going to go for a heading here of about 330 degrees. And then we're going to go to track mode. And probably, I'll do a new direct to mode, and then the aircraft should turn, right? I keep having to watch uh, what my plane is doing because I keep breaking the thing. <clears throat> so we're going to straighten up here. I'm now on an intersect, in, or an intersect to that uh, magenta line. I'm now going to go to tracking low. Now have a look at this. If I put in a new direct to, look what happens. Because I was facing that magenta line, the aircraft is now going to follow that track. And we're in, don't forget, we're in low track mode. So it'll spend its time trying to find it. Yeah. If you go to high precision, it'll probably go a little bit better. Just by clicking high, preci high precision, you're going to see the aircraft is now banking more aggressively way more aggressively, because it's trying to find it. But remember, you need to be within a bell curve. Otherwise, it just, ah, I can't deal with this. So you kind of have to point the aircraft in the right direction. Then it, this will absolutely take over. All right. If you find yourself struggling, we'll put the aircraft mode back onto heading and get yourself pointed towards where it is you want to go. Or you can put it on to stabilize and just use the bank or roll feature. Yeah. So we'll show you this briefly. So heading mode is going to turn us here quite abruptly. Probably over to 060 six zero degrees. All right, that's fairly abrupt there. Now, and I'm going to put it straight onto high track. Or essentially high precision or, or high fidelity track. So let's see what's going to happen here. We're now facing that magenta line. So I'm expecting the aircraft is going to do a bank to the left as we approach. It should do. We can see this little line coming in. See that? little marker here the aircraft should start banking us and it's not going to be as sharp or as accurate as what you're used to in other aircraft remember you got to do most of the work and then it'll try and keep you on that track all right so you can see the aircraft is now very slowly trying to turn us onto it it's very different than the other autopilots you've seen it's like the cap 140 or any of those it's doing its best to find it and that's a real world thing that happens and again, make sure you don't have any issues with your uh, with your gyro on your heading indicator. All right. 
So, low or high, basically it's going to follow the CDI needle in the HSI. Normally track high is used. Track low is for low sensitivity or low um, uh, precision, yeah? And it's used mainly for situations where the radio signal is unstable. It's going to get you roughly over that direction. It knows there's a signal over there somewhere. It'll get you in the region of. And then the high sensitivity or high uh, precision, that'll tighten it up. All right. So if you go into the actual manual, right, and we do a set, uh, let me see here now. High. Uh, set autopilot master switch on. That's all grand. That's all grand. That's all grand. Uh, I'm looking for high sensitivity. Like, there's an absolute ton of pages in this, right? A ton of pages in this. Engage high track mode. So we want to say, well, what's high track, yeah? High track. Now see the way we're getting closer to that magenta line looking at the screen, yeah? Have a look at it. Uh, now I want to go up the way, Murph. Bear with me, bear with me. So, high track or HIT or K. High track mode, it's a heading system. Uh, your HSI or DG is optional. The aircraft is equipped with a heading system, then the heading mode can be engaged. Otherwise, heading mode cannot be engaged. Okay. Pitch axis control. Each uh, press of the ALT engage will show you. Uh, roll axis control. Shh. It comes with its own sound effects, yeah? So if we have a look here, look. High track mode, uh, high track. So that's what we want to find. Can you click on that? No. High track lamp alone is illuminated. It's basically the, um, the precision. The precision. Just remember that, right? Low track is if the radio signal is kind of... <whistles> high track is it's very accurate, yeah? Now... Can I actually get the radio coming in on this? I should be able to, shouldn't I? There should be a volume switch here somewhere. It's a bear me Uh Nav 1 is tuned to 116.3. So I'm not actually picking up that on my radio just yet. But after a while, you'll hear it. Beep, 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 beep. It gives you a Morse code of that uh, VOR, so you know what it is. Uh, where are the manuals? So, Ali, the manual is located in the A2A uh, folder of your sim. Have a look. I want to show you this now. Have a look here. So, if you go into wherever your flight sim is installed, right? Microsoft Flight Sim Community, A2A Aircraft, uh, Sim Objects, Aeroplanes, PA24. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Content Info, Effects. It should be located there. If not, bear with me, lads. Uh, if you go to the HWA website where you bought it, I probably need an update. That's what's that's that's what's up, right? Just bear with me now. I'll show you. Uh, da, 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 da. So the manual. Uh, let's see. The manuals are provided as part of the product installation and can be found under your Windows Start All Programs A2A. My mistake. A2A simulations and then see it has Comanche Pilots Manual. It should be in your main menu, your main start menu under A2A. When you open it up, here is the Comanche Manual. If you want to go down to where the autopilot is, keep scrolling down until it comes across and you'll see where the autopilot unit is. Where they talk about the autopilot, this is where there is a link to look at the actual unit in detail, yeah? So we go down to where the autopilot is, the overview of the STEC system, and if you scroll down on page 27, the STEC system 30 alt operating handbook, and that's it here. Okay? Uh, can you display current winds on the GTN? Uh, it depends on the GTN that you have. Wind barbs and all that. I think they're coming, right? I think they're coming. Now, so all the beeps 
Gibbo was saying his biggest problem was he was hearing loads of beeps. Just to reiterate where that is. Now look, I'm using high precision or high sensitivity tracking. Hello We're there. fairly on the ball here, but it's not going to be perfect, lads. That is a feature of the actual autopilot. It is not a thousand percent. It, it tends to drift a little bit. So you need to watch Hello that. There. Yeah. Uh, who be this? Welcome in all the new followers. Many thanks for joining in, lads. Welcome in. So I want to show you something here. If I change... Because this is the biggest thing that's going to annoy you. You can go heading mode and it'll follow heading. So see, say for example now, right? We're currently on a heading, but we're tracking. Let's do a slight deviation here to a heading of 030. And I'm going to go heading mode. Heading mode has been engaged and the aircraft will start its roll to the right. Now, if your airplane is getting loads of beeps, beep, beep, up or down, up or down. I want to show you how that's going to happen. Give it a second. Right. That's probably too much. Okay, around there. If you're flying along and this thing is constantly beeping at you, and it probably will for most people, because we're just used to hitting autopilot, altitude hold, and forget about it. Well, it knows that your trim wheel, because it can't affect your pitch, yeah? It can't change your pitch. So it's telling you here on the autopilot unit, hey, you need to trim downwards, please. Okay, let's trim nose down. Oh, can do, 13 months. This plane is nearly as gorgeous as you. Oh, behave. Thank you very, very much indeed, my dude. Cheers. Have a look at this. It's telling me to trim down. Okay, I'm going to start to trim down. Now, it's great if you have something like a trim wheel or a button. And it's small movements. It stopped because I've trimmed down. And it's not instant. See the way the vertical speed has dropped? Uh, and it has to find its way back up again. That's how it works, yeah? Now, if I want to go back to low track, check this out. I'm off the magenta line. Let's go to low track or high track. Let's go high track. Let's see, can the plane actually turn us back onto that magenta line? It does. Because we're within kind of plus or, five, plus or minus five degrees off the magenta line. If I was kind of plus 20 or plus 30 degrees away from the magenta line, it's not going to get you there. So remember, point your aircraft in the direction you want to go. Make sure your trim is set as close as you can get it. Then you can engage your autopilot mode and your altitude mode. Is that fair enough? That's how this unit works. And once you get used to it, it's genius. It's great. Right, it's a great little unit. Very, very popular. So that's what you can do. It's working now like a champ. Right? And again, if you want to go into a hold, ATC ring it, enter left 360s until further notice. Be Jesus. Change the mode to stabilize and then move this little rotating bug switch left or right, depending on. And that's going to hold your bank angle. Forevermore, it'll keep holding the bank angle. You might get an alert about your trim, but that's okay. You can adjust that as you're flying. All right? Does that make sense to you? Does it make sense to you, friends? Are you happy enough so far? Have we kind of scratched the itch, as it were? I hope so.